Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our study of the book of Mark. Today, we're in chapter 2, verses 13 through 17, the calling of Levi. It says, Then Jesus went out to the lake shore again and taught the crowds that were coming to him. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and followed him. Later, Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. There were many people of this kind among Jesus' followers. But when the teachers of religious law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with tax collectors and other sinners, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he told them, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. There's a short little passage here, and it's one we've heard a few times. And this little section here begins a series of four disputes or challenges between Jesus and the uh, ritual laws and customs as practiced by the religious leaders. And so... We see here that it has to do with who you associate with. So what we do is we see Jesus blowing up again their ritual limitations that they had placed on the gospel. And before we get to that, I want to say that Jesus calls Levi like he called the others. You remember that he called James and John and Andrew and, and uh, Simon, Peter, and he said, come and follow me. And they left their nets and followed him. Here he comes to Levi. He says, come follow me and be, not, be my disciple. And Levi gets up and leaves his tax collector booth. So he's making quite a sacrifice too because he's giving up his job, his livelihood. Uh, he probably can never go back to being a tax collector. And even more, he's giving up a sinful way of life in the sense that Tax collectors were known and they were notorious for extorting, uh, inflating values and doing all kinds of things to charge more taxes than were actually due so that they could keep a higher percentage for themselves. So they would turn into the government the amount the government demanded and then all the extra that they had done they would keep for themselves. And so they got pretty wealthy by taking advantage of people, but clearly they were not well liked as text collectors uh, tend to be not well liked, but they were particularly disreputable in this sense. And so when Matthew, I'm sorry, Levi, I'll talk about this in a second. Levi gets up to follow Jesus. It is a confession of sin and leaving behind that sin. And who were Levi's friends? They were tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. So Levi is called and Levi goes. Now, I just accidentally called Levi Matthew. And uh, that comes from the fact that this story is told also in the book of Matthew. And in fact, the stories that we're talking about, do, 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 those stories are also in Matthew in the exact same order and in the same pattern. The story that we just read about Jesus healing the paralyzed man and then the next story about uh uh, fasting and then about the Sabbath and 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 this story is right there in the same order but in in the book of Matthew Levi is called Matthew um, so there's a little bit of question here and then when we get to chapter 3 of Mark when he lists the 12 disciples uh, he doesn't say Levi he says Matthew so what do we have here um, there's a couple of possibilities one could be that this guy just has two names, like uh, Simon Peter. Uh, of course, Jesus gave Simon the name Peter, which means rock, but uh, he was also called Cephas. So you can look through the scriptures and you can see either Simon or Peter or Cephas or Simon Peter. There's different ways of calling him. So it could just be that this guy has two names. Or uh, maybe it's just not in the scripture, but following Jesus actually changed this guy to where he began to go by a different name, uh, 
That's not unheard of, right? Simon became Peter. Saul started going by Paul. And um, here, it could be the case that Levi begins to go by his other name, Matthew, to identify the change in his life. Now, another possibility is that they're just two different people. That doesn't make sense to me, again, because in the book of Matthew, the same stories are told in the same way, in the same pattern, and he's called Matthew. And it's interesting that the book of Matthew calls it Matthew because if he's the writer, he's talking about himself. He's telling his own story, his own testimony. Um, so I tend to think it's the same person, and I think that probably we're recognizing an, a change in his identity that he identifies now as a new person in Christ. Uh, but either way, uh, I think Levi and Matthew are the same person. But what does Levi do when he follows Jesus? He invites Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. And it says there were many people of this kind among Jesus's followers. So Jesus has followers, not just the disciples. And um, Jesus may have called other people to come and follow him who were not necessarily disciples, but he had other followers. I mean, we think of Lazarus and Mary and Martha and Mary Magdalene. There's other followers of Jesus that we, that we hear who weren't necessarily some of the 12. And so we see that there was a calling of more people. But what do we see about the nature of Jesus' ministry? Jesus' ministry is surrounded by disreputable sinners. And, of course, this ticks off the religious leaders. What is he doing hanging out with these people? So there's something about Jesus, first of all, that attracts these people to him. Uh, to quote my mom, uh, she would say he attracts weirdos. <laughs> you know, he attracts outsiders. He attracts people who who don't belong in polite society, these people who are disreputable and sinners. And maybe we should ask ourselves, our Christian life, what kind of people is it attracting? Is it attracting sinners? Are people saying, there's something about this person that I want to know what's going on in their life? Or are we just, are we just attracting the good religious folks? That's a good question for us. Now, we don't want to confuse this. The Bible does say bad company corrupts good character. And there is biblical teaching about being careful of what company you run in. But there's also this spiritual principle of we have been called to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. And we are supposed to be with the sick. It's the sick who need a doctor. So do people who wouldn't feel welcome in a traditional church, do they feel welcome with you? Because there was a lot of them who felt welcome with Jesus. And it upset the religious people. I think that if your loving sinners is upsetting religious people, you might be on the right track. However, just like when Jesus touched the leper, Jesus was not contaminated by the leprosy. Rather, he contaminated the leper with healing. It's the same way here. Jesus hung out with these sinners, but they did not contaminate him. No, he rubbed off on them. He contaminated them, and he changed their lives, and he changed their identities. So let's not forget that. We don't hang out with sinners in order to just hang out with sinners and be like them. No, we hang out with sinners because they need the light. Now, how many churches would be okay with their pastor frequently hanging out with disreputable people? Uh, they'd probably be okay if they said, oh, our pastor went to this, this place uh, to evangelize or for this ministry every now and then. But if he made it a regular habit of having people over to his house who they wouldn't be comfortable having in their church meetings, that would probably uh, be kind of scandalous for the pastor. So that's how it's supposed to be with all of us. I've had all kinds of people sit at this table right here that I'm sitting at. And uh, I think of this table here as a tool for ministry and i think that brings us to something else is that a lot of the ministry of jesus took place around a table we need to be eating and fellowshipping and sharing life breaking bread with people that's how jesus did a lot of his ministry was just being at the table with people who are you inviting to your table who's inviting you to their table and are you willing to go 
And are you willing to have them? These are important questions. So who are we looking for? Are, are we trying to recruit the good, reputable people into our church? Or are we out looking for the sinners, the disreputable? Are we going to welcome them into our homes? Are we going to welcome them at our tables? Are we going to welcome them at our church? Jesus did. Jesus welcomed them. But not because he wanted to be like them, but because he wanted to contaminate them with the goodness of the gospel. So those are my thoughts today for this passage. I hope you have a wonderful study this week. God bless you.